Within every woman, there is a wild and natural creature, a powerful force filled with good instincts, passionate creativity, and ageless knowing. Her name is Wild Woman, but she is an endangered species. Though the gifts of wildish nature come to us at birth, society's attempts to civilize us and to rigid roles has plundered this treasure and muffled the deep, life-giving messages of our own souls. I made some gnocchi in my little skillet. This is like a super easy lunch meal to do if you only have a little pocket rocket stove. Liam and I have been hanging out at this sort of like anomaly of a spot that um, Simon showed me and it's awesome. <laughs> I've just been hanging out here for the past week just being a bush lady. This is one of those spots that like I feel like in a couple of years won't even be here because like this is really good land and humans like to develop so i did look on the map and it is public land so i don't know how that works but they're starting to like flag a road back here that was not here last fall when i was here so that's strange <laughs> i've just been really relishing this time just hanging out in the bush with william cooking and eating and catching up on some research for my journey further north. I've definitely been feeling like a wild bushwoman who lives in the forest. I'm that wacky lady in all of those mythical stories about the lady who lives in the woods. The witch who lives in the woods. Ooga booga. That's me. So I found this old bushcraft shelter that nobody is using, obviously, so I'm gonna repurpose some of these logs and bushcraft a chair to sit in. Sometimes I don't want to pull out my chair and I camp at this spot a lot, so it'd be nice to have a little seat to drink my morning coffee. Tell me you're not a bushcraft expert without telling me you're not a bushcraft expert. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, now I take the logs that are meant to be the, ugh, the seat part. I don't know. Nah, it's gotta be a little, it's gonna be a little slanted. I'm gonna have to make like a little back. Right. This is hard work. Constructing. And all the wood is different sizes, so you never know what you're gonna get. And sometimes it's bowed. Oh, that's much better. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Okay, well I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Um this is good. I think I might add this and incorporate this into the mix and retie it down. And I'm really not happy with how bumpy those things are. And I looked over here and I was like, oh wait, there's all this like smooth old rotting wood, which is light, but it's the key is that it's smooth. So I might use this stuff as like the base, as the seat. Well, it's worth a try, right? <laughs> Oh my god, so much better. <laughs> Looks so much nicer. I'm gonna leave this bumpy one here because it's got weight to it, which will help the leverage of the whole system here. But yes, I'm liking this. <laughs> Okay, 
well. <laughs> this thing isn't perfect. It's a little bit tippy. Hi, Will. Yeah, hey, Bobby. This is my first, like, small to medium-sized bushcraft project. <laughs> and not pretty whatsoever, but, uh, yeah. Those bushcraft people online make it seem so easy. It's not easy, y'all. Especially when you don't have power tools. But I think that's the whole point of bushcraft, isn't it? I set this up so that it can be morning sun facing, so when I'm camped out here or Simon comes out here, we can sit in the sun and enjoy our coffee and enjoy the nature. It's just so beautiful here and calm and quiet and like I never see people out here ever, so it's super nice. I definitely have a long ways to go to learn more bushcraft things. So comment down below what I should build next. If you're a bushcrafter, give me any tips on becoming better at bushcraft. Not that I have to be the best bushcrafter in the world, but just, you know, tips that would make like tying things easier, cutting things easier, choosing wood easier. That would be wonderful information to have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So me and Simony Simon and Rocco and William have made it to a cute little rec site where they don't start charging to camp here until April 15th. It is April 13th now. And we thought it'd be a fun idea to try and get to this lake so we could do some fishing. It seems like the roads are starting to dry up and yeah, spring and summer are well on their way now, which is so exciting because I was kind of down and bummed about it. Just when you've spent a whole winter waiting to be able to access stuff like this, you're just like, it's the countdown. Anyways, I'm so excited to be here right now. It is so beautiful. getting a fire ready. <laughs> Check out the tacos Simon made. Simony Simon made. Delicious. Yeah, plus your sauce there. Yeah. Pretty good. Rocco! Really? <laughs> you are such a scoundrel. Little scoundrel. Cute little scoundrel. I think people like when people experiment and then it surprisingly turns out well. I think. Okay, but no one ever becomes a Michelin five star restaurant without a little experimentation. <laughs> You want some sugar in your life? Baby. I could just eat an apple right now. I'm gonna put this whole stick of butter in there. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't remember now. Right, take your apple mix. Fry up your apples. This is what makes it a can. Be an actor in movie. All right, lazy camper girl, apple crisp. <laughs> With half a stick of butter. Wonderful. <laughs> We're finding Simon up for the mountains this summer. Mm. This is the hundredth time we've played, and Simon's won every single game except for one. So you can imagine how I feel right now. Empathize <laughs> with my feelings and why I don't want to play this game right now. <laughs> So we're headed out to go fishing. We've been seeing lots of fish jumping, so it's about time the water's nice and still. 
Oh, it's so beautiful here. Okay. I saw so many bites there for a second. There's lots of insects on the top of the water, so. Fish are happy about that, for sure. We just, oh, I see fish on the water. They're here. I'm just afraid to go out too far in this raft because it's a little scary. It's interesting because all the people in the boat seem to be fishing quite close to the shore. And I think they do that because like this is a good time the fish go closer to your shore to get the insect uh, insects this time of year that's what i'm guessing okay trying a different spin a different color with a different design i think i've caught rainbow trout on this before when i was in alaska <laughs> bad cast Watching him very closely to make sure everything's okay. He's okay. Yeah, well, you don't want to pet the Jew. You've got dirt all over you. There's Simon trying his luck with the fish, but I haven't seen any bites yet this morning. And the ducks are out, and the eagles are squawking. Like, this place doesn't even look real. <laughs> I feel like I should have probably had a better transition for the end of this video, but uh, we ended up not catching any fish, and I'm just like so determined to be able to catch fish this summer because to me, catching fish is a way of feeding yourself that, in my opinion, fishing for your own food is a pretty sustainable way of feeding yourself, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Simon and I have made it back to town. We are doing some laundry and getting our rigs all reset because it's on to the next adventure. Now that the mountains are pretty much open and things are going to get a whole lot more interesting here on this channel, so thanks to everyone who has stuck around while I'm waiting for the weather to get better to be able to do some more adventure type stuff. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you in the next video.